tri-tip? Can I get like a hand raise? Because I'm trying to figure out how many to buy. Uh, let's face it. Are you showing up? Hands up. Then you, you're going to want tri-tip. I don't know about you guys. Perfect. Okay, so if you're still scrambling to get your tamper box in, you have seven minutes, uh, which is strictly enforced. You'll be dis fucking qualified if it's turned in at 201. Uh, <laughs> just a reminder after parties at the 23B shop, shirts for sale outside. Yeah. Um, Etc. Etc. Uh, badge hacking ends at four. If you have an entry, uh, a lot of good entries so far. So hopefully some more. We have Sam with us, good friend of Layer One throughout the years. Uh, really great to have him back on a topic that I think is actually pretty cool. Um, I'll just let him go into it. Give him a big round of applause. All right. Thanks, Data Grant. All right. So I'm here to talk about SSD data evaporation, which I heard about three years ago in a seminal paper in 2010. And I wanted to see it. And man, when I started messing with it, it is more evil than I ever thought. So I thought I'd tell you about it. Anyway, this is me. I teach at City College, San Francisco. I've been doing that for a long time. And uh, everything you're about to see, the PowerPoint slides and all the references and complete instructions to do everything are on my website, samsclass.info. If you just Google me, you'll find it, plus entertaining blasphemy from people that hate my guts. Anyway, so um, data remnants. How many people out there know about data remnants? Yeah, not so many hands going up. Well, I'm going to give you a test in a few minutes here. All right. So if you have a magnetic hard drive and you delete something, it's not gone. Ha, ha, ha. That's just there to drive you nuts. It stays around forever until you're right on top of it. So let's see how familiar you people are with data remnants. So I'm going to switch from this advanced MacBook Air to a, to a comparatively primitive device using a magnetic hard drive. All right, and okay, theoretically, we will have video as soon as I figure out which way this connector goes. There, that looked, felt good. Let's see if it actually makes any light appear. Let there be light. Right. Function and the screen here, maybe. Logo P. Aha. Duplicate. That would be cool. Aha. It made a happy sound. Ah, good. Okay, this is a glorious Windows 8 device, which I was completely unable to operate until I went and got the free button that puts the start button back. Oh my God. It's like getting thumbs after your thumbs have been cut off. Anyway, so I'm. Um, all right. So what I got here is I've taken a PC with Windows 8 on it. And I have added an SSD, but we're not going to use it right now. We're going to use the hard drive for starters. So I made a little tiny partition on the hard drive, just 200 megs, just so everything will be kind of fast. And I made a file called spam little. This file contains spam, 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 and not very much of it. You have to give it about a kilobyte of spam, or it will put it in an unusual place on the hard drive, which messes up the demo. Anyway, I'm going to put that on there, assuming I can figure out how to operate this machine. There we are. That looks better. All right. So now I have put spam on my hard drive. And you can view it with just a plain hex editor. So here's a glorious free hex editor called HXD, which I use all the time. And you can open the disk and look at the disk raw the way we used to with the Norton disk editor and such. OK, so there's the master file, or I mean the master boot record and such. And then we can go find the spam. And there it is, spam, 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 spam. OK, so this disk is currently full of spam. So let's try step one. I go right up here, and I delete that file. Right click, delete. OK, is that spam gone? No, people say no, all right? Let's try refreshing the view. And you're right. That spam is still there. All I did there was alter contents in the index file, or in the, in the, in the uh, file allocation table, or in this one, the master file table. 
All right, so let's try going to the hard drive. Right click, properties, and go over to format, um, tools. All right, why can't I format this drive? I guess I got a right click format, thought it was in there. All right, right click, format, there it is, okay. So I'm gonna format that drive. Now this box tells me formatting will erase all data on this disk. So I say, okay, I don't care, just do it, don't gripe. Okay, is that data gone? The nose, I hear those nose again. All right, let's try analysis, uh, view, refresh, and yeah, that's right, it has lost its connection to the device, of course, because I formatted it, but I can open it again. And then I can search for the spam again. And it's gone. Now I don't, now last time we did it with quick format, it didn't go away, and it was only the slow format that made it go away. But anyway, it's supposed to, it stays there until it gets overwritten. Now I didn't pay enough attention to my demo there. I thought I did a quick format, which should not have erased it. But anyway, let's proceed. This is the old fashioned world of um, hard drives. Now, let me just, uh, while I've got this thing going, let me just demonstrate what happens when you do this on an SSD. Now you have to get the right SSD and the conditions just right. This is a Corsair SSD that I've added in here by removing the hard drive and putting it in. That was a quick format, hmm. All right, something's a little out of control about that format. It doesn't give me the same answers every time I do it. However, to get, have this fun stuff happen with an SSD, you have to have a fairly large amount of data, like a gigabyte. So I made an SSD partition that's a gigabyte, and I formatted it NTFS, and I made a folder full of spam that's a whole gigabyte of spam. And I put that on there, and this is, of course, why you get SSDs, because they're nice and fast, and this is going to copy in just a few seconds, which is very much nicer than a hard drive. And while that's happening, let me go to HXD and mount that disk, and that disk is called SSD NTFS. And I guess there's no reason I can't mount it while it's writing. Doesn't seem to be. And if I do Control F, I can find the spam. And there's the spam, and lots and lots of this disk are all full of spam right now. So, as soon as this is done writing to it, all right, now it's done writing. Let's put the hex viewer on the left and put the this thing on the right. Okay, I'm going to right click and delete. And it's going to tell me it's too big to recycle, permanently delete it, and I'll say yes. So is that data gone? View, refresh. Now F5 will do the same thing. Uh, it's too hard to figure out the buttons, view, refresh. You say that data's not gone. Is that what you people tell me? 11, yes it is. It takes about 14 seconds and then it's gone. Now, this may seem like a small matter, but this is a really big matter for people in data recovery or computer forensics. So let me go back to my slides and let's play some games here, all right. That ought to do it, and I might have to pull this out and put it back in. Nope, good, all right. So, I showed you that, um, all right. So now, since data does not vanish, after, and you normally when you delete it, there's this whole science and whole game of recovering deleted data, which we all do a lot of, and there are companies that do it and such, and of course this is why you catch criminals all the time, because criminals will do something bad, and then they will do something foolish, like drag it in the recycle bin and think it's gone, and so you can look and find all this great evidence on the drive. So we've gotten accustomed to this uh, high quality um, situation in computer forensics where we expect to make an image of a hard drive and get all the data, the old data and the new data, and we expect to be able to make many copies of that and have exactly the same file with the same MD5 hash. Computer forensics is repeatable. It has been a luxury we have enjoyed in computer forensics for a while and the game is over. Anyway, if you want to recover your data, these are fun tools, Recuva for the PC and Disk Drill for the Mac that will totally bring back your deleted files, as long as you're storing them on magnetic disks. And there are companies like this that will bring back your data even if your drive fails and rebuild it and make a lot of money doing that. 
And I must say, we went and toured this company, and the people there are very happy. They really like their work, and they're very advanced, and they all get a lot of company, lets them go out and learn all the new stuff about every new storage device, including SSDs. So let's talk about SSDs. SSDs are not a small matter. In this chart, the SSDs are the pale blue, which is a small fraction of the market around now, but it's growing and growing until it's going to be 40% of the hard drive market soon. So it's not, hard drives are not going away. They're going to remain the cheapest way to store a lot of data, but SSDs are going to be more and more popular, and not only for being faster, but for using less power. So we're going to have a lot of them, but there's a fundamental difference between hard drives and SSDs. In hard drives, you read and write data, typically four kilobytes at a time, and if you want to clean a sector, you just write right on top of it with no problem. SSDs must be erased before you can write on top of them, and unfortunately, you cannot erase one page. You have to erase one block, which is 128 pages. And you can't just go on erasing blocks all the bloody time because you can only go through a certain number of erase cycles before the SSD is used up. The number I've seen quoted is 10,000 cycles. Other people have said it's more, but it is enough that people worry about this quite a bit. And therefore, if you think about something like a log file that keeps on adding a couple lines and saving it, adding a couple lines and saving it, that's a lot of rewrites to the same file. And every time you do that, it would have to erase 128 blocks. So that would really wear out your SSD. So they don't do that. What they do is if you buy a 320 gigabyte SSD, they give you 10 or 20 percent more storage than you paid for, don't tell you, and the controller silently swaps out those empty blocks when necessary, so that even when the drive appears to be 99 percent full to you, it is not full, and it's easy for them to find whole pages, whole blocks to use that haven't been used yet. So it only erases them when it really has to. So if you store a small file, and then you add a few lines to it and store it again, it puts it in a completely different block and marks that other block, and it won't erase that block until it really has to. This is called wear leveling, and it has a lot of very disturbing effects. One of them is that if you try to write to a specific block, like block 100 on your SSD, you can, your computer will send the command, put this data in block 100, and when your computer goes back later to read what's in block 100, it'll find it, but it never went in block 100. It went in block 10,030, and there's an internal table inside the SSD um, firmware that knows that, but the computer does not know that. So if you want to make a forensic image of an SSD, you tell it, I want to get every block from the first block to the last block, that's not what you're reading. You're reading some random portrayal of blocks, which may or may not include those blocks at all. And if you want to erase an SSD by writing on top of it, you can write zeros to every block from the first block to the last block, and you did not get them all. And you don't even know which ones you got. So that's kind of clean fun. And if that's not enough fun, the data is changing while the SSD is plugged in without you doing anything. In forensics, we had to use this thing called a hardware write blocker to make sure you don't alter the drive while you're reading it. But the SSD alters even without you reading it, just from the power being on, because of garbage collection. Now, normally, a hard drive and an SSD does not even know when you delete a file. You just make a mark in the file table, but the drive itself doesn't know about your file table and does not know those sectors are no longer in use. But SSDs could really benefit from knowing that because they really have to control this erase process. In the first place, it's slow. In the second place, it wears out the drive. So the controller wants to know when things are to be erased and not to erase them just before you write, which would make things slow, but to carefully plan when to erase them. This is called garbage collection. So if you support the trim command in your operating system and the firmware and the SSD, then the SSD is told every time a file is erased, and then it can put it in the queue to be cleaned up with this garbage collection. So this has been called self-corrosion. I find it better to call it data evaporation because it reminds me of RAM. RAM is volatile, like a liquid that's volatile, which means if you store data in RAM, when the power goes off, it vanishes. And if you store data on an SSD, when you delete it, it will spontaneously vanish under the right conditions. So anyway, um, all right. Actually, I'm a little bit early, so I think I can probably show you this one. Um, here's the more fun demo. If you go on the Mac, you can, let me go to my desktop. Okay, I've got a folder here. Um, spam, Spam or Ridge. Okay, this is another folder all full of files called Spam. Now I'm just gonna make a copy of that folder. 